Okay, it's happening. I'm gonna show you what is on my Apple Watch. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, BMAC. And today is the day. You guys have been asking me for months upon months to make a What's on my Apple Watch YouTube video, so today, I'ma do it. Today I'm gonna show you my Apple Watch setup, show you what apps I use, how I have it all organized, so you can maybe take a few tips and pointers for yourself. Starting things out with my Apple Watch, watch face. Prior to the Series 4, I was actually using the Apple Watch Series 3, and on the Series 3, I was using the color watch face. But ever since upgrading to the Series 4 and using the Infograph watch faces, I really haven't looked back. The Infograph modular watch face is probably my all-time favorite right now, simply because of that modular complication you get right smack dab in the middle of your Apple Watch display. But more on those complications and the necessary apps to go along with them in just a few minutes. For now, let's click the digital crown button and talk about my app layout. Honestly, nothing too exciting here for my app layout. It just shows the apps that are downloaded to my Apple Watch. Around the center clock icon right there, I actually have the apps organized by whatever apps I use the most. That's that's pretty much it. That's, that's my organization technique when it comes to the app layout. So not a whole lot to talk about there. That's basically my app layout. Whatever apps I use the most are closest to that center clock icon, but the app layout is important because it shows the apps I use on the Apple Watch, the apps I have downloaded to my Apple Watch, several of which are worth specifically mentioning and explaining in this video. So without further ado, let's get to that. The first app I want to talk about is Shazam. Now I know what you're thinking, as of Watch OS 6 on the Apple Watch, we basically have Shazam technology built into Siri. So you can ask Siri to identify a song, you just say, hey Siri, Shazam this song, and she'll start listening and she'll identify it for you, but, but, maybe you're in a public place like a restaurant or something, and you hear a song playing in the background, or if you're at a very loud place like a football game, the club, the bar, whatever the situation might be. In all those situations, it's not really ideal to have to talk to Siri to identify a song, which is why it's nice to be able to identify a song without having to use Siri through the Shazam Apple Watch app. Being able to launch Shazam within seconds right on your wrist with minimal taps or presses is super helpful. And for those situations in which you wanna identify a song but don't wanna have to talk to Siri to do so, if you don't wanna have to take out your iPhone, launch the app, you just wanna do it quickly on your wrist, that's where the Shazam Apple Watch app comes in handy, and that's why I still have Shazam on my Apple Watch, despite having Shazam technology built into Siri. But next up, let's talk about a new stock app on the Apple Watch, as of Watch OS 6, the new Calculator app. I actually think it's kind of hilarious it took Apple this long to get a Calculator app on the Apple Watch, but nonetheless, it's here, I'm not gonna complain. And I think the Calculator app is actually a lot more helpful than I thought it was gonna be. Now, just like Shazam, we do have a situation here where most of the time you can make a calculation just using Siri. Siri has calculation functionality, but once again, sometimes you're in a situation where you either can't or don't want to use Siri in order to make a calculation. And once again, in those instances, it's nice to have an option on your wrist to do a calculation without having to go through Siri to do so. But even then, I actually use the calculator app as a tip calculator app, especially when you're out with friends and splitting that dreaded dinner bill. Typically, in order to split the bill, you gotta take out your phone, figure out what the subtotal is, then figure out what your portion of that bill is. Then you gotta decide the percentage, whether you wanna round up or round down. And then you gotta split that tip amongst your friends and figure out everyone's part of the bill. It's a mess. And so with the tip button within the calculator app on the Apple Watch, this whole process just became a whole lot easier. You just start typing in the bill subtotal, you click tip, and then you can decide the percentage and the number of people you have to split that bill by. So fear no more the dinner bill. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. You can still fear the dinner bill. It could get pretty expensive pretty quick. But fear no more the splitting of the dinner bill. But now is where things really start heating up. This is where things get fun. Now we're gonna start talking about an app that I think you're gonna like, but I'm not sure whether or not you're ready for it. I'm not sure whether or not you know how much I actually like this app. I'm not sure whether or not you can handle it. It's a, um, it's, it's a weather app. We're, we're talking about a weather app. I, don't, I thought that was gonna be a funny joke, it's not. But when it comes down to a weather app for my Apple Watch or any Apple device for that matter, there is one weather app which I am head over heels in love with, a weather app I use on a daily basis and cannot recommend enough, Carrot Weather for the Apple Watch. Listen, nothing against the stock weather app for the Apple Watch. It's good, it'll tell you some basic things. It's good, it's good, but it's just, 
it's not great. The problem with the stock weather app on your Apple Watch is that it's pretty much severely limited with what you can do with it, and it doesn't look a whole lot of sexy. It's not really sexy. I don't think it's sexy. Carrot weather, on the other hand, oh, completely different story. If apps truly could be sexy, Carrot weather would be the supermodel of apps. Yes, I just compared a supermodel to an app. It's a valid comparison. Carrot Weather's main takeaway is that it's pretty much fully customizable. You could pretty much customize the entire app right down to the complication for that app and how that complication appears on your Apple Watch. Like for me personally, I customized the modular complication on my Infograph modular watch face here to show the weather forecast for the next 10 hours ahead just by glancing down at my wrist. That blows my mind. And with Carrot Weather, you could actually set up multiple complications. So I'm also using a complication from Carrot Weather in the bottom left-hand corner of this Infograph Modular watch face that shows the current temperature and the forecasted high and low temperature of the day. So multiple weather complications from one app on your Apple Watch, fully customizable. All of this is amazing, but the real cherry on top is that you get to actually select where you get your weather data from. So in other words, you get to select from multiple weather sources, pick your favorite, and use that weather source's weather data to show on your Apple Watch the weather information through Carrot Weather. The levels of customization here are insanely impressive. And you take that customization in addition to the sexy UI. I mean, I could go on and on why I love Carrot Weather so much, but I could just let the customization and UI speak for itself. Carrot Weather, try it. I can almost guarantee you will never use another weather app again. Carrot Weather for the Apple Watch, such a beast. But next up, let's talk about a new habit I've been taking on lately. Lately, I've been wanting to do more reading but admittedly my schedule sometimes is just so hectic that I don't have the time to actually sit down and read. Sometimes it's impossible for me to read, like if I'm driving a car or if I'm hiking or working out. And then other times I kind of just don't really feel like actually reading a book. I'd rather just lay down and listen to one. So to solve those problems, lately I've been hooked on audiobooks. And when it comes to audiobooks, my audiobooks app of choice on the Apple Watch is Audible. I've talked about Audible on this channel in the past, how much I love the iPhone version of the Audible app, and now I get an Apple Watch version of the Audible app, which is also super helpful. And speaking of which, I really like how audiobooks are synced from my iPhone to my Apple Watch, meaning when I use the Audible Apple Watch app, I don't actually even need my iPhone. I can listen to all my audiobooks just on my Apple Watch alone. And my place in the audiobook is also synced, meaning, for example, I could listen to an audiobook within the Audible app on my Apple Watch and wherever I leave off, I could pick right up from there on my iPhone. So if you're into audiobooks, the Audible Apple Watch app, certainly worth checking out. And if you guys want to try Audible for free, you could actually do so through the Amazon Audible free trial. If you guys want to take advantage of that, you guys could head to bmac.link slash audible. That will bring you to the Amazon Audible free trial sign up page, which will give you free 30 days access to Audible and two audiobooks you could download and keep forever. A free 30 days and two free audiobooks, not a bad deal if you ask me. So head to bmac.link slash audible to take advantage of that Amazon Audible free trial to get your read on within the Audible app on the Apple Watch. Although you're not reading, you're listening. But you are reading because you're listening to get your read slash listening on within the Audible app on the Apple Watch. But now switching up things a little bit, I have to address one of the main reasons I got an Apple Watch to begin with. Way back when I got my Apple Watch Series 1, the main reason for me picking up that device, admittedly, was for fitness tracking. Prior to my Apple Watch weightlifting days, I was actually limited to tracking my reps, my sets, my exercises, all that, either on my iPhone or with a notepad in my pocket. So those two reasons in particular are why I actually switched to the Apple Watch to track all my exercises, rep sets, all of that, which led me to find and start using a fitness tracking app that I love to this day, an app called Strong. Strong pretty much always has and probably always will be my go-to weightlifting companion when working out with the Apple Watch. I actually think I was one of the first to start actually using the app. I downloaded it right around the time that it came out. And I gotta say, the app just keeps getting better and better. Basically what Strong allows you to do is you can set up custom workout routines and save them right on your Apple Watch, which will allow you to track your exercises, your sets, your reps, your weights, all that right on your wrist. And you can even set custom timers in between your sets. So if you start slacking off like I do sometimes and start talking to the girl on the elliptical, for too long, you could be reminded to get back to work. But the exercise and rep tracking alone is so worth it for me. Never before has it been easier to ensure progressive overload in my workout. And the whole process is ridiculously simple. You just fire up the app, you start your routine, you see the exercises you have to do, you start doing them, you do your set, you log the reps, you wait for the countdown timer to hit zero, and you repeat. It's that simple. And then all the data you track on your Apple Watch is actually carried over to your iPhone, thus allowing you to see all your data right on your iPhone through cool charts, graphs, all that, to see your progress and your new personal records. I could spend an hour talking about Strong. That's how much I love it. That's how much I think they've contributed 
to these gains. But we all know a healthy lifestyle is only half the equation. The other half of that equation being healthy sleeping habits. I'll be the first one to admit that I probably don't give sleep nearly as much attention as it deserves. I mean, editing YouTube videos every night till 4 a.m. definitely doesn't help, but you know, hashtag sacrifices for my people. But I do try to stay on top of my sleep, and in order to stay on top of my sleep, I use an app I've also talked about on this channel before, a sleep tracking app called Pillow. Now, even though there are several other sleep tracking apps on the market now, Pillow is still my number one. And now even more so, because one of the complaints Pillow users had is that there was no audio Auto sleep functionality. Auto sleep functionality meaning the app will detect when you're going to bed or when you're sleeping and track that sleep automatically without you having to actually start a sleep session. But Pillow now has auto sleep functionality built in so there's really no reason not to check it out. Now even though I don't use the auto sleep feature within Pillow, there is a feature I'm obsessed with. The ability to actually set a wake up window. Now what the wake up window does is Pillow will actually use the data from the night before, all that sleep tracking data, and within the window you set wake you up when you're in the lightest sleep possible, which will allow you to wake up more easily and in a better mood. And I can guarantee you, if you continuously do this, you will start to have more energy throughout the day because of Pillow's unique AI that knows how to track your sleep and show you how to improve your sleep over time. So just goes to show you how great of an app Pillow is on your Apple Watch. It's easy on your battery. It's ridiculously intelligent. And because of all that, I've had Pillow from the start. It's still my favorite sleep tracking app. So if you want to start tracking your sleep on your Apple Watch, Pillow. It's about to be your new best friend. But now there is one more app I've been dying to tell you guys about. It's kind of a secret app. It's an app you probably don't know about, but it's not necessarily an app you'd use on a daily basis. You don't really actively use it, but it's still an app I think you'll find pretty darn cool. A little app called Complicated 2. Complicated 2 is basically a complication customization app, which means it's an app that actually allows you to set custom text, emojis, countdowns, timers, or even photos as a complication on your Apple Watch watch face. And it sounds simple enough, which it is. But the level of personalization that Complicated 2 gives you on your Apple Watch brings your Apple Watch personalization experience to a whole new level. Ever since I posted a screenshot on my Twitter showing you guys the BMAC logo right on my Apple Watch, it's caused a lot of buzz. A lot of you guys thought I was using like dark magic to get that logo to pop up on my Apple Watch. No dark magic, it's just Complicated 2. Complicated 2 is the secret. If you have an empty complication spot on your Apple Watch watch face, kind of like I did, and you want to fill that complication spot with something personal, you could technically monogram your Apple Watch by using Complicated 2, kind of like how I used to monogram my color watch face and my older Apple Watches, to make the Apple Watch that much more your own. Regardless, no matter what option you choose, Complicated 2 is an awesome way to bring that level of personalization to your Apple Watch. And it just looks so sick, man. Just having my logo on there like that. It looks better than a Rolex logo, to be honest with you. Make it that much more your own personalize this baby. So to do that, check it out. Complicated too. So it might surprise you guys how I don't have dozens and dozens of apps I use on my Apple Watch on a daily basis. I usually just stick to the few apps I actually need, the apps I talked about in this video. So links to all the apps I talked about will be in the video description box below if you want to cop any of these apps. And please, please, if you guys found this video helpful, smash that thumbs up button. But more importantly, Comment down below your favorite apps for the Apple Watch. I always love finding out about more apps for my Apple devices, so if you got one I didn't mention in this video, blast it in the comment section below. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go finish drinking this pre-workout, get ready to crush another workout using the Strong app on my Apple Watch. These games ain't gonna be got themselves. That doesn't, that, that's not good English. That doesn't make sense. I'll see you guys in my next video. These gains gotta be got, gotta go get, the, gotta go get these gains. Doesn't matter. All aboard the gain train, baby. Let's go.